Hello there, I'm RhinoGT4, and welcome to Let's Play WRC2 Extreme for the PlayStation 2. Developed by Evolution Studios, published by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, released in November of 2002. I say Europe because this is the PAL version of the game, because there was no North American release for the game. And, uh, yeah. Also, um, just like in WRC1 Let's Play, this is technically part 15, because I already did a championship of this on HG Central, which you should check out. Maybe I'll link a, I should probably, like, actually leave a link in, like, the description or as, like, a pinned comment to this video. You can at least find the playlist of this LP. <laughs> which will have every video. So, uh, yeah, you should probably check that out. Especially if you want me to go thoroughly through, like, the options and stuff, because I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the WRC mode. So in HG Central, we did the Professional Championship, and upon winning the Professional Championship, we've unlocked the Expert Championship, which is actually going to be a lot longer, because, as you see, Professional is only two stages per day. We have three per day on the Expert Championship, which means these rallies are <clears throat> going to be three stages longer. Hooray! So we're going to pick one player, and now it's time to pick a car. So we have the Peugeot 206, Ford Focus RS, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, Subaru Impreza, Skoda Octavia, Hyundai Accent, and Citroen Zara to choose from. I use, What did I use in the HG season? Oh yeah, I used the uh, Skoda for the Professional Championship. I'm going to go with something a little less silly for once, and I'm going to use the uh, Subaru Impreza. Also, interesting thing to note is each of the cars have their own stats and stuff, which I think I kind of thoroughly went through on the, the the real part one. Since this is like the fake part one. Uh. Anyways, with Subaru we have three drivers to choose from. Tommy Mackinnon, Petter Solberg, and Toshihiro Arai. I'm going to drive as Petter Solberg because I said so. I don't know. yourself in some of the most beautiful scenery in the world. Snow-covered Scandinavian forests, sun-baked African wilderness, South American mountains stretching into the clouds. Now imagine blasting through it all in a two-man guided missile. One ton of steel and alloy, fuel and air, flesh and bone. Two liters, 300 horsepower, four-wheel drive. The sound of rocks smashing off the bodywork, the turbo screeching under the bonnet, your heart pounding in your chest. This is the World Rally Championship. 14 rounds on four continents, one of the toughest of all motorsport competitions. To beat your rivals, first you have to beat the clock. In a race against time and the elements, every second counts. On gravel and asphalt, sand and snow, from sub-zero to searing heat, you're pushed to the limit and beyond. How do you sum it all up? W.R.C. Monte Carlo Rally is the first event in the World Rally Championship calendar and combines glamour and prestige with unforgiving alpine roads. One of the reasons it's so special is the sense of history behind an event first run almost a century ago. Another is the fact that a stage can start on dry tarmac and finish on thick snow. To win Monte Carlo means something special, even to World Rally Championship veterans. So now we got our intro videos out of the way. Uh, welcome to the shakedown area. So um, we have the choice here to run a shakedown stage, which I'm going to show off because why not? You know, fuck it. But um, yeah, so um, there's one thing I need to point out immediately here. This is going to be fucking hard. <laughs> this is going to be really hard. Here's our service area. <clears throat> By the way, get the condition of the car. Can change the setup. And, uh, unlike in Professional, we don't have the engineer-recommended setup, so that means... 
I'm just gonna have to end up running with the default setup because I don't know what the fuck to do to this thing, and I don't remember what the uh, engineer changed. So whatever, I don't, I don't care. I, I really don't care. <clears throat> just make things harder. Speaking of making things harder, manual transmission. It kind of sucks in this game, but I'm using it anyways. So here's our shakedown. We we'll get a nice uh, countdown here. Show off all the different cameras. In she is. Nice little Subaru. Get a. Uh, I, I kind of skipped it, but we we get a helicopter flyover of like the entire stage, which is really neat. But again, it goes over well the entire shakedown section, I'm sure. So yeah. And here's the cameras. We got the close chase cam. We got far chase cam. We got the bumper cam. Oh god. Hood cam and a dash cam. And then the uh, the center passenger camera because that thing exists for some reason those are your camera choices I'm gonna be sticking exclusively with the close chase cam since the dash cam doesn't really offer much for me so yeah and yeah I'm just gonna make a quick run through the uh, shakedown here see um, physics compared to WRC1 physics of this game quite different uh, definitely better Cars feel like they have more, a little more planted to the road. They're still very, very slidey. Like it's still fairly arcadey in physics, but uh, yeah, the cars definitely feel like they're actually attached to the road more instead of just floating on the road and kind of just sliding everywhere, which is nice. Look at them! Look at them driver models. Those great. <clears throat> then we get <clears throat> replay at the end of everything. And we have to press select to stop the replay because if you press start, well, start just opens up the options menu. That's a little quirk about this game, is the fact that um, no matter at any point wherever you are in the game, whether you're in a stage, in the options, or in the options, in the main menu, whatever, press start brings up the options menu <clears throat> under all circumstances, which is really neat. So, uh, yeah, let's continue now. And uh, here are our first three stages as far as weather forecasts. So there's a little bit of info about the rally, which is said in the preview video, so yeah. But uh, be a little misty in stage one, then clear skies in stage two and three, which is nice. So let us head to, I believe we're going to go back to the service area. And yeah, back to the service area. Might as well go through the whole... Uh, room camera pan there to the car here's our car's condition once we uh, inevitably damage it and also wear out the tires and brakes those will change again have no idea what to do to change the setup on this car so I'm just gonna leave it as is and let's go to our first stage but first we save okay the game likes to auto save at random points randomly sometimes it's interesting but um, here's our first stage it's going to be 5.1 kilometers in length, and we're starting at 7.30 in the morning on January 18th, 2002. Because, yeah, I forgot to mention, this is officially a licensed game of the 2002 World Rally Championship. Oh, boy! But anyways, <coughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to let this play for about a minute just to show it off. But, uh, yeah, remember how I mentioned that I'm playing the PAL version of this game because there's no North American release of this game? Uh, I go into greater detail, I think, in part two of the professional season on HG Central, but basically the TLDR is I modded my PS2, so now I can play uh, not North American games on it. Yay! Which, you know, opens me up to some games that I missed out on because I'm a stinky uh, America trash like this game and some Formula One games and also Sega Rally 2006, which is a really fun game. There's enough of that flyover. Let's start our stage. Now, I'm going to have to really concentrate here. <clears throat> hard. So, like I said, this is going to be very hard. I'm going to need to drive as good as possible. Just to, like, even get close to a podium. So, I'm going to really need to try my best to pay attention to the pace notes as I can. With, uh, you know, with my whole talking over them. 
but especially with the visual case notes, since I don't have the benefit of a map anymore. Oh, controller? Hello? Are you okay? Okay. Oh, that was a nice setback. My controller kind of like died for a second there. That was weird. Anyways, um, pay no mind to that. I just lost a shit ton of time. But uh, <clears throat> I, I completely lost my train of thought. No, you cannot restart the stage Zapdos if you fuck up. You just kind of have to keep going. You're good. Everything's fine. So, yeah, the thing I'm gonna have to uh. Oh yeah, visual pace notes. Yeah, visual pace notes. There's no map in this game, uh, like there was in WRC One. And oh boy, there we go. 13 seconds off the stage leader. I am very much in last place now. Hooray! Ah. Yeah, that's the thing I'm really gonna have to uh, try to not do right there is touch any barrier because one, in one interesting and admittedly very annoying quirk about this game is the fact that um, if you like you know if you hit a wall at any angle it'll just wrap your car around and it'll just get your nose stuck in the wall and you'll have to reverse out and it's really fucking annoying and it costs you a lot of time especially if you're running with manual transmission because there's a with manual transmission in this game there's quite a delay in the uh, <clears throat> in like how quickly you can up or down shift your car So, uh, going down the gears to engage reverse takes a lot longer in manual transmission than it does in automatic. It fucking sucks. But, I gotta be the hardcore man and play in manual. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I've severely contemplated, like, just doing automatic gearing for this. Because I'm gonna have a hard enough time trying to focus on the stage itself. <clears throat> and, like, not screwing up. Because so I've already made a lot of mistakes. I am a little bit rusty at this game, because it has been a bit since I last played it. And there we go. We've uh, finished our first stage very, very terribly. <laughs> uh, and then we get a little comparison by the uh, stage winner. I actually gained a little time on that last sector. Hey, I was faster than the stage winner in the uh, last sector of the stage. Then we got a replay. Hurrah. There's usually music music accompanying, accompanying the replay, but I turned the music not off, but down because of copyright, because uh, the Chemical Brothers provide the soundtrack for this game. At least most of the soundtrack. Oh, there's where my controller died. Helicopter shot. Very good. But yeah, there's that, so hooray. So let's go on to the results of our first stage. We in last. But let's move all the way up to the top here. Tommy Mackinnon wins the stage number one. Just ahead of Jill Panizzi. And Sebastian Lowe, Francois Delacorde, fourth. Carlos Sainz, fifth. Thomas Radstrom, sixth. Those are the six guys who currently are in the points positions. Here's the rest of the stage results. And interestingly, Alistair McRae and Tony Gardemeister got the exact same time on the stage. Nice. Hooray. And then there I am in last. Quite a ways back in last. Seven seconds behind Rovin Para. So yeah, not a very good start to the rally. Um, yeah, this is going to be really interesting. Anyway, stage two. A little bit longer. 8.2 Ks. Now in the uh, afternoon. So, um, well, let's go. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Excuse me. And yeah, so. Uh, another interesting thing to note about this game with the whole Colin McRae situation, because, uh, remember how in WRC 1, uh, they, uh, because Codemasters has the rights to the name Colin McRae and his likeness in video games, um, they simply replaced Colin McRae and renamed him Ford Driver in WRC 1. In this game, they replace him completely with a different, completely different driver. I forget who it is. I, uh, I Bugu. Wasn't, it's not Igangi Bugu. I, I forget, like, who they replaced, uh, McCray with, but yeah, his, 
the only McCray in this game is Alistair, so there's that. And I mentioned that I really need to, like, focus on these stages. Oh boy. Yeah, this is, uh, this is quite a disaster. Ah, uh, Francois Duval, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, Francois Duval replaces McCray in this game. Speed bro, welcome to stream. So yeah, I'm streaming this uh, you know, LP live on Twitch as I do with most of my shit. Forgot to uh, mention that in the intro. This is just this is just an absolute disaster from beginning to end so far. Hooray! I can already tell like with the gearing of the car, I'm probably losing time. I don't know. Again, I don't really know how to. Prepare for the rallies, and I don't remember the fucking race engineer setup. I might cheese it and like look at back at the HG Central play through, and maybe adjust my setup according to uh, that. Because <coughs> I'm a cheeky fucker, <coughs> or something like that. Oh god, what am I doing? That's not the end of the stage. Still in last. All right. You might also notice that um, not everything, not every barrier is a solid object in this game, unlike WRC1. Like, you can actually drive through the ropes and the bollards and the fencing and <coughs> the advertising boards. The only thing you can't drive through is the green fencing that protects the uh, spectators. But, yeah. And of course, actual like walls can't drive through those, obviously. Oh Jesus! I'm sincerely hoping that um, I can actually like improve as the season goes on, because this is really bad so far. Oh, I can't see where. Don't know where I'm going. Help! Hilfa! Here's the downshift thing. It's really annoying. So just can't go down through the gears. Whereas an automatic transmission, you can <coughs> go from like sixth to first in a fucking nanosecond. Holy shit, I'm not in last, I'm in 20th, oh my god. I'm improving. Yeah, this rally is going to be a complete throwaway. I'm just, uh... This is just kind of the de-rustification process, I suppose. Whoa. Hairpins. Of course, we have a very long way to go, but... I don't see, uh, myself getting anywhere near the top six in this rally. Because, you know, those are the only six positions that matter, because those are the only positions that, uh, give you points. You kind of need to score points to win a championship, see? Twenty-six point is a success. Yeah, pretty much. So it was quite a fun game. I liked it a lot. Obviously, they they ramped up the difficulty in the expert rally here as opposed to the professional rally in uh, WC One, which was the highest difficulty there. Or at least I haven't scored any penalties yet. Um, I'm sure I will at some point, because penalties... You get penalties by... Um, having to manually reset your car. You can also get penalties for driving around the uh, g checkpoint gates, the sector split gates, etc. Uh, and yeah, there may be even additional penalties on expert mode that I don't know about. I don't know. But anyways, uh, Carlos Sainz wins this stage over Mackinan. Cool. Here's the rest of the stage results. I ended up finishing 16th in the stage, so... Yay. <laughs> hey, I'm not last in the rally. Mackinan continues to lead over Gilles Panizzi. Lots of shuffling going on up front. Whereas I... only gained one spot. Got around Loix. So there's that. 
Now to the final stage of day one. It's the marathon stage, 14.3 kilometers. Yeah, every rally in this game has its marathon stage, which is over at least over 12 kilometers in length. So, uh, here we go. It's time to either lose a fuck ton of time or gain maybe a little time. <laughs> Probably going to be the uh, former of that. We shall see. Oh, hey, I'm missing a headlight. Good thing this isn't a night stage. Oh, it has some visibility issues. Although, if this was a night stage, I'd have the giant ass light bar attached to my nose, so. It would be fine. Or light cluster, whatever the hell it's called. It's starting off going very uphill. Um, those who watch the uh, professional season on HG Central, which you should, by the way, since this is a continuation of that playthrough, um, might notice the uh, stage order is a little bit different, as uh, <clears throat> uh, the Expert Championship actually uh, orders these stages in like the order they are, in like you get to choose. F Choose them in the, uh, what's it, like the quick race mode, like uh, time trial or just a single rally. Whereas in the professional, it chose, like, it, it had a specific order, but it wasn't in any order of, like, this. So, uh, yeah. Plus, it was also only six stages out of the nine available. Each rally has nine stages, technically, even though it's actually like four maps, four or five maps, and then reverse variants of those maps. Hey, it works though. It makes the stages feel different enough, so it's fine. And then the novice championship was even easier because it was only one stage per day. Stiff. Just didn't have to worry about damages or penalties or anything. Oh my god. Kind of trying to make my way through here. Good. Oh shit. Bouncing off the walls. I'm actually surprised the bounce screen didn't hook me around. Oh yeah, pace notes, uh, that's another thing. Pace notes, because it's always different from game to game almost. <clears throat> By that I mean like, you never know. Uh, this game does its pace notes like in WRC1 where uh, a one turn is a slight bend and it goes all the way up to six, which is the sharp turn. So yeah, in case you needed to know about that, so get a right one here, that means I'm going to be going quick. Lead into a wall probably, but still. Oh. Up on the bank, we're good. Boy. Speaking of tight turns, right, five that tightens. And how much tighter can it get? Shit, fuck, bat, balls. I, like, glanced over at my chat for a split sec- Jesus Christ, that was a big drop. Anyways, I gl glanced at my chat for a split second and that happened. Flying over a cliff. Alright, flew over- flew off a cliff, check. Yeah, that's checked off the list. Car's a little bit damaged, not nearly as damaged as it should be after flying off a cliff and falling that far, but hey. Damage is very, um... You have to try hard to damage the car in this game. Like, very hard. Like, I've had lots of terrible tumbles and etc. And I've only gotten, like, just minor body damage throughout the, uh, the HG season. It's just, ah... Uh, 
And now I'm almost half a minute behind the uh, stage leader. I am in 19th, which might suggest to me that we have a couple of retirements from this stage. <coughs> which is a thing that can happen in this game, unlike the other C1. AI can actually, like, retire from a rally. At any point. There's a nice little bit of realism there. Don't hit the marshal, even though I couldn't hit the marshal. Oh, this is a really awkward uphill. Very steeply uphill hairpin. Very awkward hairpin. I contemplated playing this, uh, doing this championship with my, uh, my G27 wheel. Because, you know, it's compatible with the PS2 without any shenanigans, just plug it in, and PS2's just like, oh, hey, it's a Logitech wheel, okay. <laughs> but, um, the problem with that is there's a bit of, like, a delay, like, input delay in the steering, which is a bit annoying, and, uh, yeah, it kind of messes, it, it kind of messes with my, uh, perception of, like, when to steer the car, so I just kind of decided to stick with using controller. The Dushock T. Oh my Jesus. So, so far throughout this rally I've had one green sector compared to the stage leader. So it won't show up as green on the, uh, the bottom left. Because that'll only show up green if I'm in the stage, if like I'm the leader of the stage at that sector split. If I gain time, it'll still show up red. If I'm not, you know, in the stage lead. Which is kind of... Eh, I would prefer it, like, actually, you know, give me input of, like, Oh, hey, you're gaining time. But, nope. Not here. It's black and white, so either you're first with a green, or you're not first with a red. Oh, we're doing a heckin' quick now. We're doing a really heckin' quick, I'm kind of very scared. Look, I was able to make it through the turns. Oh, hey, Jimmer. Welcome to I Suck at Rally. Enjoy your stay. Subaru is maybe a little bit bored sliding into the turn. Okay, we're good. We're good. Everything is fine. And we've reached the end of the stage. I wasn't last. Yay. Honestly, that wasn't that bad, considering the tumble down the the l very long drop off the cliff. I will, I'll take that. <clears throat> I will take that. Also, hey, we did have two retirements. Nice. So, Carlos Sainz wins this stage. Where the hell? Oh, Mackinac was fourth in this stage. I don't think he's leading the rally anymore. Fantastic, and yep, 18th out of 19 drivers. Toshihiro Arai and Marcus Grunholm both retired in this stage. So, fantastic. Anyways, yep, Carlos Sainz is now this rally leader after our first day of crashing. <laughs> For me, at least. I'm a whole minute seven behind uh, Sainz and just barely ahead of Freddy Floyd's. <laughs> Oh boy, this this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a hell of a struggle. Anyways, let's move on to day two. Here's the weather forecast for our next three stages: overcast, okie dokie, simple overcast skies. Very nice. I'm gonna make my face a little face cam a little smaller on the stream. Anyways, to the service area we go. You see, our brakes are very worn out, our tires are actually in pretty good shape, and we have body damage. Now remember that massive tumble I took. Um, yeah. No mechanical damage whatsoever. Oh, I got a donation. I didn't even realize, because I had the fucking, uh, 
I have my like computer speaker turned all the way down so I can't hear notifications. Thank you for the 20 bucks, Gemmer. Very appreciate that, Sim Daddy. Uh, anyways, let's repair the car. Now, I only have five minutes to repair the car, and the clock uh, moves in real time, so I kind of have to be quick about this if I also want to make adjustments, and also depending on the repair time. I, I f feel like I want to try to change some things, but I don't know what to change, and I'm just, I'm just not... I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna go with the default setup. I'm just gonna go with the default setup. That's all I'm gonna do. So, stage four. 5.9Ks. I believe this is the first stage we do, or this is stage one in the professional championship, if I remember correctly. I have, like, I have, like, these stage orders for each difficulty written down somewhere. I just don't have that up right now. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh, well. Anyways, let's go. Third. Fully repaired Subaru. Two, one, let's try to make day two a little better than day one. Shall we? Starting to go very downhill. Very downhill. Just gotta keep my car off the barriers while also trying to drive as fast as possible. I, I just kind of have to drive on the edge of control. Or, yeah, edge of death at all times. With this oh, pff, nice. Here in the expert mode, I can't really afford to take it easy. Gotta, gotta really, really focus here. Oh, jeez. Pretty good first sector. I was tied with whoever was, whoever was leading this stage right now. At least uh, down to the tenth. Really concentrating now. Now that I got like all the explanations about the stuff, about the game out of the way, pretty much. I mean, I obviously didn't kind of was kind of vague about stuff since I went into detail on the true part one of this LP on HG Central. You should watch it from the beginning. This may be part one in title and uh, thumbnail, but it's actually part 15. Because cross promotion, my dudes. I was a little scared through that sector, so I was kind of a little nervous. And as you saw, my little bit of hesitance uh, cost me two seconds in that very short sector. Yeah, again, you, you gotta be, you pretty much have to drive like Colin McRae. You have to be fearless when in doubt, flat out, etc comes to the expert mood. Oh jeez. We're good. Everything's fine. Ah. Good thing I heard the pace note about that turn tightening. Or else I would have been mildly fucked there. So we be good. Keep sliding around. Drifting the car around the road. So far, dry tarmac. Uh, completely dry Monaco rally so far. Haven't had to deal with any snow. I'm sure that will change in day three. So what's a Monaco rally without a bunch of snow at some point? And stage end. Okay, that was a very good stage. Holy crap. Oh, all right. I'm happy with that performance, <laughs> obviously, you know, instead of being barely out of last, I was actually like, where was I? I finished third in that stage behind Science and Sebastian Loeb. I will gladly take that. Granted, it was a fairly short stage, so I'm not going to gain much time on my opposition, but hey, I moved up three spots to 15th, so yeah, sweet. But science continues to lead the rally, and of course I lost a couple more seconds to him overall, but I'm not worried about winning. Let's see, 31, I'm like 38 seconds out of the points. Which is, uh, 
yeah, I don't see that being a thing that's going to happen. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, time for stage five. 8.2Ks. Let's go. Let's go and hope for the best. Please. <laughs> if I can keep up my performance from uh, stage four. Might be okay-ish. But... It'll take a lot of concentration. As much as I want to interact with the chat, I need to focus on the video game so I don't die. Distractions cause death. It's okay. I still love you, Chato. Love you so much, I stole it. I stole a nickname. Oh god. Hi, Wall. How you doing? Let me see switchbacks aren't too bad. Chat always best. Oh, yes. Yes, it is, Jimmy. Oh, God. Also, I feel a lot of pressure because someone... Yeah. Yeah. Popular YouTuber, Jimmy Broadband. Over 100,000 subscribers now is watching. It's just like, oh god. No, someone important is watching. Fuck. What do I do? Senpai is noticing me. Anyways, that's that. Back to focusing on stay. Oh, there go a few seconds. Fine, we're okay. Keep going. Keep going. Sector two split, and did I actually gain a couple positions from that sector? I think I did. Pretty sure I was ninth in sector one. Fuck me. Nope, nope. Bad, 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 bad. It makes you feel better. I finished wanking to the street. <laughs> Pressure's off. Okay. Well, since you've climaxed, I guess I can go back to being boring. No, no. Make Petter Solberg the ultimate rally dude. So far I'm not. Hey, back down the line. Again, because of those couple spins, I'm actually surprised at how well I'm doing on this stage as far as time. Only eight seconds back from the stage leader. I feel like this entire championship is gonna be like as much damage control as possible. And kinda try to like a pull a basically pulling Matt Kenseth 2003 in terms of winning this championship like I probably won't win many if any rallies but goddamn, I'm gonna try to consistently score as many points as I can I'm off to a great start by being well outside the points yay it's okay it's only one round I got 13 to go after this. Still 130 points available for me after this. And if the uh, the professional championship was any indicator, um, I won't have to give up that many points. Like I can afford to give up some points because I think I ended up winning that championship by like I don't know, almost 100 points I think in a 14 round season. You know, a 140 max point championship. Shit shuffled a lot. So hopefully, basically gonna have to rely on, you know, inconsistency of others. Hey, maybe that'll make for an actual interesting playthrough for once, instead of me just winning everything. 
forever. Wow, I ended up second at the end of the stage. Holy crap. Okay. Seven seconds behind whoever won the stage. Oh, I gained two seconds on the second sector. Or fourth sector. It's going to be really interesting to look at the uh, the split comparisons at the end of each stage. So, Gilles Panizzi won this stage by seven seconds over myself, as Petter Solberg. Yeah. Finish second, you still get the disappointed uh, animation. Yeah. You actually have to win the stage in order to get the happy stage end animation. Which is kind of silly, but hey, whatever. And with that stage win, Panizzi actually moves up into the rally lead. Passing uh, Science. Cool. But I move up one spot into 14th. Oh man. Getting closer. Except not really. Well, maybe. Yeah, still half a minute behind 6th, uh, so... Again, points, I don't know about that. Anyway, it's time for our final stage of the day. Now, the name of this... The name of this stage has a 2. Um... I... F I don't know if this is a slightly alternate map of, like, another stage already in this, like, another stage map. Or... If it's the exact same stage, but they, they uh... They, they listed it twice just, you know, to have all nine stages. I don't fucking know. Because, like, whenever I look at the maps, I can't really see a difference in them. But I ha then again, I haven't actually done a complete side-to-side -side comparison. I should probably do that at some point. You know, for science. Because I am genuinely curious about these uh, stages labeled with a 2. Uh, also, hello, Matt. Welcome to stream. This is clearly more in entertaining than Ghost in the Shell. Except, I don't know. Ooh. Don't hit the thing! That thing's very solid shit. So you might have noticed that little white and yellow, like, concrete slab on the road. I kind of freaked out about it. Yeah, um, those things are actually extremely solid. Which is why I was tr desperately trying to not hit it. I, I learned that through, uh experience. Meanwhile, as I continually fuck up, the momentum is dying quickly. Hitting things help. Hot lap mode has been disengaged. I can only do so good for so long. Then turn back into a uh, Dummy McDummerson. Dummy McDummerson, yes. Perfect. I'm trying, though. I do remember this right, six. Also, 17th in the stage. Aw, oh, yeah. Here we go. All that progress. Just quickly going down the toilet. Again, that's that's a uh, thing about driving, having to drive on the edge at all times. Try very hard to make up just a little bit of time, but one little mistake and all your progress is gone and then some. It's a vicious cycle it is. Alright, gained uh, 11 spots in that sector. Cool. Fuck. I'm about to lose them. Every time that section. Yeah, this is feeling a lot very familiar right now. I think this just is like a copy paste. Just to pad out the uh, number of stages. So it's an even three for each day. That's interesting.
very interesting. Try to watch on PS4, but it's laggy as fuck. And for PS4, Twitch doesn't like low or low, uh, the fuck is it called? Low latency mode, that's it. I didn't lose many positions in that fourth sector with that, uh, incident. I fell back to ninth. around these switchbacks as quick as I can in my current skill and concentration level. I don't know how I avoided spinning there, but I'll take it. Quickly goes the Subaru. Ah, I remember that section this time. I always forget about that little chicane at the end, because I'm just like, okay, straight shot to the end. Oh shit, no it isn't. This time I remembered. Ah. Oh, yeah, game three set her. Game time to sector, sector three. Over the uh, stage winner. I like how I have, like, one green sector in, like, each stage on this day. All right, recover to the sixth place uh, stage finish. That's I'll take that. Loeb, Sebastian Loeb gets his uh, first stage win. Loeb's doing well in this game, but usually he's down and towards like the bottom. What the hell? I don't know. Ooh, gaining lots of spots. Espinizzi, uh continues to lead the rally now with 11 second advantage over Science. Richard Burns moves up into points. 45 seconds behind, and I've moved up into 11th, still 33 seconds out of the points. So I'm gaining positions, but I'm not gaining much time on 6th, unfortunately. Which sucks, but... Ah, there we go. I was wondering if the snow would come on day 3. Oh, it coming. It definitely coming. So, uh... Now we're gonna have to deal with reduced grip and sliding everywhere because of the snow and ice. That'll be fun, but now onto the surface area once again. Brakes, body and tires, that's it. So let's just do those repairs. And let's move on to our final three stages. Starting with stage number seven, the short stage, 5.9 kilometers. And going the other way now, so here we go. For stage number seven, our first stage seven of the LP. Since, you know, the Pro Championship is only six stages, so yeah! And there's the snow. The, uh. Yeah, the ever ominous snow. So here we go. How much less grip am I going to have here on this? with this snowy weather. Ah. Early observation uh, says a lot less. You can also see a reflection of my car on the road because it's all wet and icy now. And or icy. From the snow. Oh, game lag a little bit there, over here. Ooh, Jesus. Hi, Wall, how you doing? Yeah, these three stages are going to be a struggle with the reduced grip. Probably going to wreck a lot more. This is like, I'm, I'm flying on tarmac. Oh shit, no I'm not, I got no grip. Alright, as soon as I, uh, you know, actually adjust. It's just a matter of actually getting that adjustment, or adapting to that, to reduce grip quickly. Slidey slide goes to Subaru. Doing good so far. Oh, 
left, right, left, right, left, right. It's like, it's like a chicanery. Yes. Oh my jeez. Nope. Okay. Hit the wall kind of flat so I don't have to worry about spinning. I like how I'm like apexing none of these turns. Oh, yeah, um, massive difficulty spike, Matt. Also, I do suck, but there's also a massive difficulty spike from professional to expert. Like, like the highest difficulty WRC1 was alright, you know, I did pretty well. I won most of the rallies still. This, I don't expect to win many, if any, of the rallies. This is actually, like... Legitimately really hard. Oh, jeez. I mean, I haven't done, like, every rally on this difficulty before. So, I'm not sure whether or not the difficulty will be consistent, but I'm going to assume it is. Just for the sake of trying to psych myself up into, you know, actually getting good. Oh, jeez. That bank was not friendly. It was not friendly at all. There's me finishing on the podium in this stage. Probably also in the top six. Ten. Quickly to the line. Fourth place, okay. Still a decent finish, but I lost a lot of time in that last sector, unfortunately. Lost five seconds to the person who won the stage. If that tells you anything, it's a lot of time. And that was Tommy Mackinnon who won the stage. Lots of flipping and flopping as far as like who's doing well on a stage per stage basis. Or stage by stage basis. Oh my god, menus quit lagging. Menus like to lag a bit sometimes. Probably because of the uh, background videos, I don't know. So, Panizzi continues to lead the rally. He's pretty he's, he's pretty much got this wrapped up. All he needs is just one really bad stage, though, but I'm pretty sure he's got this win. I move up into the top 10, now 9th. And still half a minute out of, I think I'm half, still half a minute out of, uh, yeah, still half a minute out of the point, but still, uh, uh. now, time for the reverse version of the, uh, marathon stage, because like I said, four stages with four reverse variants and one copy-paste. It's time for the reverse marathon stage. 14 Ks, here we go. Now, if there's ever a stage where I could really impact my hope on uh, scoring a point, it's this stage. If I do really well, I could potentially actually get close to sixth, but I, there's also, because of this in fact, the stage is 14 k so there's also a lot of road or room for me to uh, make mistakes. And since I'm very prone to making mistakes, don't be surprised if and when that shit happens. It's kind of a very bad entry into that hairpin. The car wasn't wanting to downshift at all. Again, that, that delay in the downshift with manual transmission is so annoying. I never actually tried out semi-auto in this game. I wonder, uh, I wonder if that would be like a better choice, because I'm pretty sure I would still be able to manually shift the car, but I'd be able to recover a little better. I don't know. I might try semi-automatic, semi I can't speak, for uh, the next round.
because, I mean, the only thing Manuel is doing is just giving me a handicap, okay. I, okay. Well, um, there's my first, uh, stage lead of the rally. Not only that, I was two seconds up in that first sector, and I'm about to lose it all. Alrighty, well then. That was very shocking, that's why it's just kind of like, oh. <laughs> you what? Thing, I did another thing, oh my god. Sydney Auto probably downshifts automatically, probably. Uh, again, I'll try it out in round two. Again, this is just a, hand, a further handicap to make things harder for me. Because I lose even more time trying to recover from a spin. With manual. As much as I'm struggling, as far as like actually keeping up with the leaders, I, I am having a grand old time. Like this is a really fun game. This is quite a large improvement from WRC one. And again, I like the challenge. Like, I don't mind if a game is too easy, but I also like when a game challenges me. This is going to be one of those times where I'm going to be very much challenged. But all that means is it's going to feel so, so sweet when I succeed. So hey, anything that will make me feel mildly adequate about myself okay with. Oh, that was very late entry. Had just enough grip to make it through. Snowing a little bit heavier in this stage than in uh, stage 7, I noticed. That's cool. Jeez, that could have been bad. Kind of wish there was like an actual stage progress meter in the HUD, but in this game, unfortunately, there is not. Like the only thing I can even like loosely gauge my progress through stage on is the uh, the gap countdown on the uh, top right, the green uh, the green countdown. Which is the... Uh, compares it to the time of the fastest car up to the uh, that sector split in the stage. I really don't want to jinx myself, but so far, so good. In this stage. And in fact, I'm actually leading the stage after a third sector split. Like, holy shit. That's after, like, over 7Ks of avoiding death. Narrowly avoiding death. Bridge! Bridge the gap between myself and the points. Ooh, hi, game, why are you lagging? What is going on here? Did a mild upset there, that's fine. Alright, still leading the stage into the final sector of Marathon Part 2. Whatever this stage is called. 
I'm not even gonna bother to like attempt pronouncing like the names of the stages or anything, because it's just like, hey, these are words I don't know what the fuck. To or these are letter combinations I don't know how to say. So I'm just gonna not save myself the embarrassment there. Hard on the brakes. So it was at top speed, and I just, you know. I want to make it through the turn. Hard on the brakes. I see this hairpin. I, I saw the heart hairpin fading into view through the uh, the the mist of the or the like the fog of the snow. I'm like, oh yeah, we. I need to slow down. I need to slow down right now. All right, downhill switchbacks on ice. Not scary at all. Nope. Completely safe. I heard over finish. Oh my god. Am I gonna win this stage? Yes, I am. First stage win on stage 8 on the marathon. Holy shnikes. That's all I really have to say about it is just holy shnikes. Look at that. Four out of the five sectors was a green split. I guess that's what happens when you get good. Fun fact. If you ever tried getting good, this is the uh, this is the payoff. So uh, I won the stage by six seconds over Mackinnon. That's really going to help me in my uh, pursuit of a point. Although I don't know if I'm still going to get it. And still only two drivers out of the rally. So the rest of the 19 have been well behaved. Pinisi continues to lead the rally. Only lost a couple seconds to uh, Mackinnon. Actually, he lost more than that, but. Lost a couple seconds to second place. And I move up into seventh, but I'm still 40, 46 seconds out of uh, out of the points. Or no, 26. 46? What the fuck am I thinking? Or no, 16? Yeah, 16 seconds. Math is hard. <laughs> Hurts my brain. My tiny little stupid brain. Anyways, time for the final stage of the rally. Only 5.1k, so... Either I make up 16 seconds on what's-his-face, or uh, I don't score a point. All this is for naught. Yes, I used Ultra Instinct for the snow. Oh my goodness, the snow is even heavier, and so is the fog. Also, him low test drive. Did you enjoy live-action scoob it doob it Because I remember that movie being awesome. I watched it. Visibility is not. Visibility has been set to no. Alright, well. This is not going to be a good into this rally, I can already tell. I feel like grip is even worse now with the even heavier snow. It's probably just a subconscious thing. Also, could be because of tire wear. Yeah, I've been on these tires for quite a while now, since the uh, beginning of stage seven. And there we go. There's there's the humbling for sector split. The last out of the remaining drivers. Hooray. Thanks for that spin. Oh well. Like I said, there's no way I was gonna make up all that time in this one stage to get a point, so... So, yeah. It's been a decent introduction to the uh, Expert Championship. God, I can't see. Like, I can almost barely see through the fog, but... not really. I mean, I've dealt with much worse in other rally games, that's for sure. Colin McRae 1 comes to mind. That one stage in the UK, where visibility was about half a car length ahead of you. This stage is pretty garbage for me.
Do I use this? Jesus, Mother Mary. Make it through. Just try to get as good of a finish as I can. Maybe hold on to seventh. Probably not. Judging by my current position, the fact that I'm continually losing a lot of time. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, we're gonna make it across the line in 18th place in the final stage, damn it. Hey, I gained time in that final sector at least, so there's that, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, I only lost 10 seconds to Panizzi at the end, so, who won the stage. Not bad. I'll take it. So there we go. Our first rally is complete. I was actually a little shorter than I was expecting. Only 37 minutes for Panizzi. The winner, Tommy Mackinnon, ends up finishing second. Carlos Sainz, third. Sebastian Loeb, fourth. And Citroen. Francois Delacour moves up to 5th, and Richard Burns takes the final point in 6th. So, uh, we have... Wow, we have 5 manufacturers in the points. Holy crap. That is, uh... Actually really surprising. There I am in 8th place. So, it was a good effort, but... Yeah. Overall, a good start to the season. I was expecting this to be very hard. Honestly, I was expecting to do worse. Than that, so let's just uh, save this since we're at the end of the rally. And here are the points allocations, as I mentioned, for drivers and then for manufacturers. Again, I don't understand how uh, cons manufacturer points are scored in this game, just like WC1. It seems almost random. I don't fucking know. But here are the results, or here are the standings after our first round. As you see, I'm in a multi-way tie for 7th at 0. Panizzi takes the early rally, or the early championship lead over Mackinnon, Science Loeb, Delacour, and Burns. But I got 13 rounds to go. Plenty of points still on the table. And uh, we'll see how things go next time. Also, here are the manufacturer standings, Will. But, uh, yeah, that'll conclude the first, uh, well, the first segment on this channel, part 15 in actuality. But with that, stay tuned for more WRC2 and the next round of the Expert Championship.